It did, but what, what, let me tell you what happens in most often in my experience, John, is it, even if the Denver Post does credit the story, what oftentimes happens is, uh, and when you're dealing with the National Republican Senatorial Committee, there were some national outlets and some national blogs that were interested in the story. By the time it got to the national level, they were reporting, their lead line would now say, the Denver Post is reporting. Right. So the Denver Post was kind enough to share the credit, but by the time it had, it had gone up a second step up the media chain, uh, now it was the Denver Post receiving the credit, but uh, I think Alan's point in terms in terms of really just embarrassment uh, is is well made. And I would say that in my three years at KOA, I think this is greatly affected by the loss of the Rocky Mountain News. I can think of two specific instances where I broke uh, original Enterprise News in the morning on KOA, and before I left the office at noon. The Rocky Mountain News had duplicated my story with full credit to not only me as the reporter, but to 850K as the outlet. Right. And I, I just don't see that happening that much anymore. Let's talk about the size of your enterprises. And, and there's left and right. You mentioned, you know, on the left, you've got the Independent, you've got Colorado Polls, and, and, and political junkies gravitate yeah. to, to those sites. On, on the right, there's Face the State, which is now a bit of a hiatus, but I think it's going to be reborn. And I'm trying to think what else. I don't know what else. There's, of course, the Independence Institute site and the in, uh, investigative work you do. But there seems to be, once you take it away from the newspapers, the sides seem to be a bit more easy to identify. This mm. is you know, the left, this is the right. Um, I imagine many people think that your site is on the right if they're inside education because you're doing stories like that when in fact you're just reporting. But you know, these are still small little audiences. Are they going to grow? I think they're definitely going to grow. And I think you're seeing, that, I mean, Denver, there's our site, which is sort of a niche, again, because we focus only on an education site. But in other cities, there are news sites that are getting quite large and very respectable that are straight down the middle. There's the Voice of San Diego in San Diego. There's the Min Post in Minneapolis. And the Voice of San Diego won a national investigative um, reporting award last year. Um, and they're a complete web-based organization. And, and they're getting a fairly large audience. I mean, that's kind of who we want to model after, nonprofit do a membership drive to bring in more money, you know, have corporate sponsors and foundation support, and that's how they survive. Let, let, let's talk money for, for a second. Mm -hmm. you know, when you take a look at Colorado Polls or Colorado Independent, they are underwritten largely by the left rich guys. Might be through their foundation, but you, you can see Tim Gill, Pat Stryker money there because this helps, helps their cause. You know, when it comes to your site, you get money from, from some foundations, mm -hmm. and I, I imagine you're very, very grateful for that. Oh, we're extremely grateful for it, and the longer it keeps going, the better. But we're trying to, um, you know, cover ourselves by looking for diversified sources of funding because we can't count on foundation funding forever. But but how? But the newspapers make it because they sell the product and they sell advertising space. I don't see how any of these sites, including Complete Colorado, which is a labor of love for you, uh, you know, how do they sustain? Well, first of all, let me make a point. Let's go back to one of the uh, first examples that you brought up, Colorado Polls, and you, you mentioned about maybe they're underwritten in some fashion. One of the things, though, that I do notice that happens frequently and, and with a, quite a bit of consistency on the left is they get advertising from the left. That is to say, the Bill Ritter for Governor re-election campaign has actually bought uh, internet advertising space on Colorado polls. Now, why would they do that? That's already an incredibly left audience where Bill Ritter already probably has 90% of those votes. Why would you buy advertising on that site? But I don't see the same thing happening on the right. That is to say, I don't see, let's say, maybe, and maybe I'm casting this in the wrong light, but, but maybe why not a Coors, uh, why doesn't Coors buy some sort of uh, uh, advertisement? Or Republican to, candidates on face the state. No, I don't see that at all either. Right. And so, I, I mean, that's one of the ways that I think that there's been a disparity in why the left overshadows the right when you just look at the, the quantity and quality of well, then, these then independent sites. Are these enterprises sustainable? It seems as though newspapers are going to continue to, to hurt while we can get free news online. And these services that give new, fresh, investigative stuff, mm -hmm. um, you know, are, are you one lawsuit away from not being around? That sure. is, if, yeah. if somebody says, hey, that's not a true story, we're going to sue mm -hmm. you for slander, 
you're, you're a guy in a computer, or you know, right. that, that's not the Denver Post. It's not right. like you have a whole lot of liability insurance right. to keep you away from. Well, that. we actually do. We've just done that, and we but, and we have three. There are three of us who are full time and you know, professional journalists. But yes, it's, it is tough to sustain. And um, you know, I think it's all, we had a, actually uh, commissioned a business plan that shows that the way to survive is to continue to rely on foundation support. Um, and foundations, I think, realize that um, this is a much more cost effective way of getting out information about education than doing a glossy publication that costs thousands to produce and mail and that people get in their inbox and never read. I mean, this is stuff that's dynamic, it's changing every day. We have a blog, which is opinion, that, that, that is lively, in, that's a companion to the news, and so people want to read it and, it, and it changes every day. We send newsletters out to people's email boxes, which is, which, you know, makes they don't have to come looking for us, we go to them. And I think that that, you know, foundations and then eventually corporate sponsors and memberships will sustain these enterprises. And to Alan, what, what he's mentioned so far about his readership and so forth, there, there's something to be said, John, I, and I don't know where the threshold is, but, and, and it's, it's, I'm sure as Alan can, can testify, Complete Colorado has been around for a year, and we're just now starting to see sort of a brand recognition from our customers, and that's just in one year. I, I, I'm wondering how long you have to go before someone trusts you as a site, and they, they willingly network with you uh, via their site or via their Facebook. But there seem, I mean, you need to be around for five or but seven years. I can years. see we've only got a, a minute or so left, but let me, let me say it seems as though uh, the newspapers of the past had an edge to them, you know, the, the so-and-so Republican, the, the right, whatever sure. Democrat. Arkansas, Democrat right. Democrat yeah, so are we getting to the point now that these type of news services will have uh, benefactors who underwrite them because there's no way these things are going to be, you got to make it in, in revenue. So is that, are we returning back to that, that era where news is kind of from this side or, or from that side? Well, I really hope not. I think that there's a place for those kinds of sites. I really think that sites like ours, which are down the middle, are really important, that there's credible kind of objective is an overused word, but journalism that, that people can trust as not coming from a particular political slant, because I think otherwise you're just going to have the balkanization of people on the right going to the right sites and people on the left going to the left sites, and they aren't even necessarily uh, dealing in the same facts. You know, you're watching MSNBC and Rachel Maddow or Keith Olbermann, or you're watching, you know, Hannity and Glenn Beck, and, the, you know, it's like they could be from different planets. As I've always maintained, John, I think the greater biases in media comes from not the way a single story is presented, but from what stories are selected mm -hmm. in the first place. And that's why I think you will see a return to the kind of, of uh, one side, or not one-sided, but the where the sides are playing against each other with their own journalistic outlets, where they can present fair stories, but it will simply be what those outlets decided to look at in the first place. Also, what's nice about doing it online is, you're not limited to 500 words exactly. or 300 sure. words. If there's a lot of documentation so somebody can see exactly where you found that information, right. you, link you to can the put it all yep. on there. You can link to it. You can yep. put PDF files up exactly. there. It works. We do that and all the time. Once you've done that, you're, you're, you're totally credible. You're, you're unassailable if, you, if the documentation's there to support your report. So these things are going to move forward? I think so. All right. From Complete Colorado and the Independence Institute, Todd Shepard, I appreciate it. Thanks. Alan Godley, people want to get onto your website. Where do they go? Ednewscolorado.org. Ednewscolorado.org. Don't miss it. And by all means, look for me late night on 850 KOA. Check out the only web page you ever need to go to, which is independenceinstitute.org. Pick up a podcast there on ivoices.org. And by all means, tell a friend. We'll see you next week. You jibba jab, bamboozle, nuka, noozle, pippity pop, she called. You jibba jab, bamboozle, nuka, noozle, pippity pop, she called. I mean, you keep on talking, but you don't know where to turn it off.